Mid-morning in Paris. Karine and some of her team are carrying out a couture shoot during an agricultural show. The man behind the lens is the legendary photographer, Patrick de Marchelier. Patrick de Marchelier decided like three or four months ago to shoot the haute couture with all these animals. I think because now he's living in New York, he loves what everything is so French. I say, okay, to please for Patrick, I say, okay, let's go there. And I didn't know how difficult it would be to photograph in that place. The old French couture of the farm, amazing, no? Fantastic, no? Good idea, Karine. It's not my idea, it's your idea. I've never <laughs> been here. <laughs> we share the ideas, but this really was his proper idea. After I tried to organize everything, but it was his idea. It's like Jack Chirac, I think. He loved everything from the farm, all the peasants, all the animals. And okay, it's going to be a very classic French picture, finally, and I'm very happy. So anyway, we have this one, now we try with the egg. Right. We put it here because of the, I like the contrast of the high fashion couture, very chic clothes. And uh, I, love the, I love this animal, for the, the couture. Uh, and the farmer, and uh, it's good mix. I love the spirit of the farmers, they love the animals, and uh, it's a very good spirit together, it's very nice together. Because these animals are the more beautiful animals of France. They all like champions. It's, so it's, it's a, a big show like for farm, It's a yeah. couture of animals. So they have competitions, they bring the best of the farm they bring here. Yeah. Yeah. We made a casting between the different uh, cows and different lambs and different... Uh, no, we make a big casting before. Casting of animals, it's not easy. <laughs> You know, Patrick is, is shooting very quick, as you can see, but everything has to be prepared in advance. So I know exactly the look of the girl. I know exactly what the girl is going to do. It seems very simple but every, and very, like, um, not prepared, but it was very prepared. You see, when she was working on eggs, I saw this ID a week before. She was pouring water in a month. I saw this ID before. I know which animal we need. So it looks quick and easy because everything was very, very, very well prepared in advance. It's my way to work with Patrick because I know he's no, he don't have any patience. We have to go very quick with him. Patrick shoot with a very small team. So it was a big team with a production because it was a bit difficult with all the people around for the safety of Patrick's camera, of my dresses. But we have just one hair, makeup. So two people, uh, Patrick get his two assistants. It's not so many, it was a small team. Karine clearly loves her work, but within the fashion industry, a lot of people are asking how long she will be happy to edit the influential, but relatively little read French edition of Vogue. Did you get my letter? Yes. Do you understand? Yes, very much. Thank you. Well. It's been suggested that the logical next step for her is to replace the legendary US Vogue editor Anna Winter when she retires. She insists it is a position she has never been asked about. It's a very powerful job much powerful than what I have here in French Vogue. But it's a bit like to go, if I was an actor, do you want to go to Hollywood or do you want to stay here in Paris and do the cinema I like to do? I think I would prefer to stay in Paris. Even I would be very proud if someone proposed me, but no, no one. And I think Anna is doing a great job. And I think she's a great person. But it may well be that her future takes her in a different direction altogether. She certainly has friends in important places. We speak very, very regularly. Um, we, we all have the same goal. I mean, they want to keep their readers. Uh, they want to um, have a, a, a very loyal uh, readership. And we want to um, you know, keep our, our customers and make them come in our stores by having beautiful pages and magazines. So it's, it's really the win-win situation. The dialogue with, uh, with Karine is, is very... Uh, uh, very rich in terms of, it's not only about strictly fashion, it's also business, it's also long-term vision, it's very interesting. But on this evening, she is concentrating on events taking place in Paris. She drops in to see a friend's jewellery collection at the Dior store. Skull facing you? Yes. Amazing, no? From there, she heads to Yves Saint Laurent, pausing to think a little about how the week has been. It's a very good season. 
Everywhere I go, I'm very happy this time. Very different um, ideas from the stylist, proposition, but very good one. I hope that uh, people will be able to buy these beautiful clothes we see on the one way. That is another problem. <laughs> because what we see, we can photograph amazing stuff, but after, what's happened in the shop? Show over and the crowds file out. Karin waits and exits alone. At times, this extraordinarily glamorous and powerful woman is surprisingly shy and nervous. I'm sure, I hope there was a chapter left because now it's about six, seven years I'm here and I'm very happy here, but I'm sure something new is going to happen in the next years. I don't know what. As she walks into the Parisian night, it is apt perhaps that it is an impression rather than words that she leaves us with. For more on Karin Reutfeld and to find out who's next on Reveal, go to our website.